Hi, this is Phil Carlton, and today I'm going to be showing a fun technique where you can create your own customizable font. Before I do that, I do want to remind you that I have a page over on Facebook where I post things occasionally, and also you'll be notified if you're following me on Facebook when I create a new video, and you can also follow me on YouTube to be notified over there as well when I post one. I'm going to be working today in Premiere Plus 2, but the same features will be found in Premiere Plus. This technique really has two steps, and the first step is just to create a new font. And we're going to do that by going to the Letter tab. Now once we're on the Letter tab, in Premiere Plus, you will have a button right here that is for Quick Font. In Premiere Plus 2, if you click on the Font Manager, it will open up our Font Manager, which is really handy if you haven't used it because you're able to search for fonts by name or by size. But down here toward the bottom right of the pop-up window, in the Font Tools box, you'll have a button for Quick Font. Quick Font is the program that will let us use one of the fonts from our computer and convert it into a font that can either be used in Premiere Plus 2 or on either our Viking or Fav embroidery machine. For this example today, I want us to work with Arial Black. I'm picking a nice bold font, and also I'm choosing one that I know everybody's going to have on their computer. Now the next choice down is Style, where you can choose Regular, or Bold, or Italic. This Arial Black is a big bold font, so I'm not going to worry about making any changes to that. The only thing I want to look at is down at the bottom, notice I have File Type for use in the Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery System. And for my character set, I'm going to go to Super Extended. That's just going to create a few more characters. So it's going to give us our uppercase, lowercase, punctuation, and some different characters. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And on the Stitch Options page, you can tell it what kind of font you want it to create. Here, if I look under Stitch Type up at the top, I see several different choices. I have Satin Letters. I can do a Pattern Fill. I can do a Pattern Fill with a Satin Border. I can do just a satin border. We can actually create applique letters, so we can take any of our fonts and turn them into appliques that are going to have the placement, tack down, and then a final finishing stitch, or just an outline. Now, I'm going to use for this example pattern fill plus satin border because I want my final letters to have a fill and a border as well. We're going to change both of those later, but we're going to start with this option. Now I want to talk a little bit more about this, but I'm not really going to use them today, but I do have a button here for Stitch Options where I could change the settings of the fill that I've selected. And I have Border Options where I could change the settings of the border that I selected, so I could make my satin border larger or smaller. But, but again, I'm not going to do any of that today. I'm going to go with all of the defaults here. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. It will take just a moment to generate all of these letters into a font for me. And then it's going to have it added, have me add it to my fonts. Now, just to look at this name, if we look at all this different information, you'll know we have Arial Black, regular, because I didn't make it bold or italic. We have FSB, which means fill with a satin border. We have the super extended character set. And whenever I chose the fill and satin border, it automatically set the range of this font from 20 or from 80 to 120 millimeters. We're going to be able to play outside that size, but for the default, for this default, I'm just going to leave it there and click Finish. It'll save the font, and then I can go ahead and click Close. Now I'll just show you that if I go now into my fonts and scroll down into the category, all my categories are alphabetical, so if I go down into my My Fonts, here's that font that I just created. So I could select it and type in a word, come over to the far right and click the green check mark. It will have, and it will have created that font for me. Now, obviously, those are 80 millimeters, so about a little over three inch tall letters. So it's a pretty, some bit, pretty big lettering. But at least you see, you can create the font and then immediately use it here in Premiere Plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and press Delete on my keyboard, and then we're ready to move to the next step. For the second half of this technique, we're going to be working in Premiere Plus 2 Font Create. Now, if you come down to the tools in the lower left-hand corner where we launch our different modules, you'll see a plus sign. When I click on that plus, we have two different options. We have first the Premiere Plus 2 Quick Font, which is just another way to get to the module we were just working in. But we also have Premiere Plus 2 Font Create. So I'm going to go ahead and 
launch that. Font Create will let us do a couple of things. It will let us either create a new font entirely from scratch, which is something I really haven't done very much of because I'm not tempted to go in and digitize, you know, 26 uppercase, 26 lowercase, all those different letters. We have so many fonts built in. You can also build super design sets. And one of my favorite things, really the thing that I like the most about this module, is if I've created a font like the one that I just created, I can come in and really make some changes to it quickly. So I'm going to tell it that for my file type, I'm going to work in font, and I'm going to edit an existing font. And notice it automatically found that Arial Black that I just did. It went to the category My Fonts, and that was the first one listed alphabetically. You'd find the one that you just created. Then when we click OK, it's going to load that font. Now, if you've worked much in our Premiere Plus 2 Create module, you're going to notice it looks very, very similar. We have the same tabs across the top, the Quick Create, Freehand, and Precise Create. Over on the left side, we have a film strip that tells me exactly what's going to happen with this. It's going to have a blue fill right now, so it would do a blue color change, the pattern fill, a red color change, and then the satin lines. Now, I could come in and select these objects, for example, and if I right-click... I could come in and I could pick a different pattern. I could add a border, change the border if I wanted to. I could make changes there, but I don't want to go in and have to edit, you know, 60 or 70 different letters and symbols and numbers and everything. So I'm going to look at this little button right here. It's called Universal Properties. When you click on Universal Properties, it's going to bring up all the information that has built all of our different fonts. And for this one, we have two colors. And then it's telling me right now it has also, it has a color object, it has a pattern fill, and it has a satin line. First thing I'm going to do for mine is I want the colors to both be the same. I want my fill and my satin line to be the same color. So I'm going to just click on color number one, and I'm going to use a purple because if you know me, you know that I like purple. Let's see if I can find, I like that, we'll do that 2254, I think. So I'm going to click on color 2 and change it to 2254, which is just purple. So now all of my lettering is going to be in that purple. The next thing we have is the pattern fill. So I could edit the pattern fill to a different pattern, but I want to look at this convert area down here because I can take that pattern fill and I can convert it to an applique piece or any of our different specialty fills. So for this one, I'm going to go to a crosshatch fill and click Convert. So now it's telling me that it's going to take every pattern fill in this entire font set and convert it to a crosshatch fill. Now if I look at my properties for my crosshatch fill, I can pick the properties that I want. And for this example, I'm going to take the gap to about 2.5 millimeters, say. Now let's do a 3 millimeter. And I'm going to have it just do parallel lines running at zero so that I just have parallel lines running straight across. And I want those to be triple stitches so that they're a little bit bolder. And I like a stitch length when I can of about a 2.5 to a 3 at least on my triple stitch. The longer that stitch length, the more thread's going to kind of loft on top of the fabric. So I'm going to take that to a 2.5 and click OK. And then I'm going to take my satin line and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in, change it, so I could change it to an applique piece, a motif line, which is one of our decorative stitches, a running stitch, or a triple stitch. I'm going to tell it that I want to convert it to a triple stitch. Then I'm going to look at my properties for that triple stitch, take my stitch length up to a 2.5, and click OK. And now I'm going to click Next, which is going to tell the program to take all my fills and change them to crosshatch fills, and all my satin lines and change them to triple stitches. On the finalizing screen, we have a couple of different options. The first thing I want to do is put a check mark in Compress Font. That's just going to take the font and make it as small as it can on our computers. It really won't take up very much room anyway, but it doesn't hurt. And then I want to put a check mark in Triple Stitch and Crosshatch Fill, and I'll show you in a minute what those do. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and click Finish. And now you see it's created that font for me with that triple stitch line across the middle and then a triple stitch border as well. And I can see all that over here at my film strip. I'm going to go ahead and close this program now and go back over to Premiere Plus to Embroidery. Now this next step is going to seem a little confusing. It's always a good idea when you've made changes to a font to go into your font selection, select a different one, then go back to the font you selected. That way I know everything about that font has been updated. It's just kind of a safety. It should automatically update, but doesn't hurt. 
Then I want to go into my font manager. And this font, you know, still has this really crazy name. I'm just going to call it Arial Black Crosshatch and click the Apply button. And then when I close, now it's renamed. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the word hello, but I want to talk for just a second about the size. When we selected the fill with the satin border, the minimum size it created was 80 millimeters, which is just kind of a recommended size. But we've taken that satin border out. We've taken all that fill out. So now we just have triple stitches on the inside and a, board, a light border around the outside. So we can make this pretty much any size we want. I can make it really large or I can make it fairly small, so I'm going to bring it in at 25 millimeters because I know it's not going to really be a big deal. Then I'm going to come over to the far right side and click the green check mark, and now it's created that font. Now here's where the fun begins, because if you remember, we had the option to set editable things, and we changed both the, the triple stitch border and the fill to editable. So if I right click now and go here, I notice that I have settings for crosshatch fill and for my triple stitch. So maybe I'm looking at this and I look at it and I say, I want the crosshatch fill, but maybe I want it to be filled with diamonds instead. And I want the angle to be 30 degrees. And I click OK and it's immediately changed. Or maybe I want to right click and go into the crosshatch fill and maybe I want it to be, I could do parallel lines, but I could change the angle and maybe make them 60. So you can come in and really modify and change the font and the look of that font. And maybe I like these better a little closer together. Or maybe if I've done it larger, I want it to be bigger. There are just a couple of other things I want to show you about this font and some things you can do. First of all, I'm going to bring the word hello back in. Notice I changed my hoop size just so the letters were filling my screen a little bit better. Color sort is checked right now. So when it brought in this word, it brought it in as one color stop. I'm going to delete that one, uncheck color sort. Now when I click apply, it will bring in each letter as two different color stops. So the first letter is going to be the inside of the H, the second letter is going to be the outline of the H, and so on. So you could customize all the colors that way. But I'm going to bring, I'm going to take this one step further. I'm going to type in my name in all caps. I'm going to bring it in at about 50 millimeters. I'm going to make sure that individual has a check mark in it. Now when I click apply, it's going to bring in each of these letters. If I click outside so nothing is selected, as I click on them, each of them is going to be a separate object. So that now that means I could adjust it and maybe I want this first one to be purple and I want it to be a little bit larger. And since I have green handles and I know it's going to recreate the letters every time I resize it, maybe I want to go into the crosshatch fill settings and change the angle of that one to 30. Then I'm going to take this one, make it a little more narrow and a little taller. Rotate it that way, and maybe I want this one to be a red on the inside. I'm going to make them all the same color because I think they kind of work nicely that way. And I can even overlap them a little bit. It's not really going to hurt because I'm just overlapping some triple stitches, not really heavy. Maybe this one's going to be green. And maybe on that one, I want to do a crosshatch fill, but let's make it squares. And then on this one, come in here, make it, we'll try blue. So you can come in and really customize the size and shape of each of these letters. And because they're kind of light letters and they're running, I don't like that. I'm going to change that. I'm going to go back to a crosshatch fill because I really like them all kind of matching. But let's just pick a random number there. I didn't like that random number. So let's try, it can be anywhere in the circle. So let's try 300. There, I kind of like that. So you can really create fun custom looks with the different fonts just by playing with the size and the rotation and the settings and colors of each one of them. I'm going to do a control A on my keyboard to select everything and click delete. Then I'm going to type in just one capital letter, my capital letter P. This one I'm going to bring in at 75 millimeters or about three inches tall and click the green check mark to apply. Because what I want to do with this now is say I want to emboss this on a towel. If I right click and go into my crosshatch fill settings, I can use the same settings that we used when we did some embossing. And that's going to set the gap to one millimeter. And I'm just going to use the square and a running stitch. And that one millimeter crosshatch is going to kind of hold down the nap of the towel. So now if I click OK, that letter is going to emboss down the nap of the towel and give you kind of a cool embossed look on a towel. And now you have a whole alphabet that you can easily customize to do that.
So now that we've played with this a little bit, I want to challenge you to do the same thing. Go in and create a font and maybe use a different fill. Use a different crosshatch setting or use echoes. You could use a spiral fill. You could even fill it with maybe your favorite decorative stitch. And I want you to play with that and see what you can do. And I want you to share it with me because I want to see what you've created. You can post them over on my Facebook page or even just share them in another group and just show something you created because I think it's important when we're working on our software not just to see these techniques but to kind of play with them and see what else we can create using the same ideas. I hope you really enjoyed this and I look forward to what you've done. Thank you very much.